Okay, what we're gonna talk about now is just uh, what the first time you go into the house, what kind of things you're gonna see. And what we do initially is, we're, we're, number one, we wanna make sure the electricity's been shut off to the house. And in this case, we've already walked around an entire walk around in the house. We've looked for the foundation to make sure the foundation is sound. We've looked at the walls to see if there's any bowing in any walls to determine if there's any structural issues first, to see if it's structurally okay to go into this house. And then we'll go in cautiously. We definitely need to make sure to have some safety equipment and because uh, we don't know what's going to be going on inside of there. And mold growth is definitely going to be an issue. So at least an N95 mask to make sure we don't have to breathe in those toxins that are in there. As we come in, it doesn't hurt to have something, a good solid, say a shovel or even a, you know, a, some piece of equipment that you can use because you can see the mud that's come in with the flood water is going to create this carpet that's slick. In these areas where it's dried, it's not going to be as slick. But as we go through here, there's definitely going to be concerns about slick carpets and there might be holes in the floor. So just make sure this one obviously sounds fairly good and solid. So it may not be as big a concern as other issues. We've also seen where paneling's coming off the walls and covered up entrances to say, for example, to, uh, to the basement access. So you can't see that there's a big hole there. You step on top of it and you fall through. You can see here where an entire sheet of drywall has fallen off the ceiling and piled up into the floor. And we don't know how stable these other sheets of drywall are. So we're gonna have to be careful when we come through here just to do the initial survey to see what kind of damage there were. If we can, we're gonna go ahead and get into the basement. If there's not water already still holding in that, we're gonna get in the basement and look for that foundation to see if that foundation is still sound. As we go into each and every room, like for example, the kitchen here, we have to really look for not just mud on the floor and how slick that's gonna be, but all these other pieces of you know, paneling and cabinets that have fallen over and could potentially be easily to fall over and we step on and slip and who knows what's underneath all this stuff inside there. The other thing to remember when you come into a flooded house is that stairwells can be very dangerous places. Covered with debris, very slick mud, all the things that have fallen down onto and dried. And the other problem is that since the stairs a lot of times are most often made of wood, that can easily have floated up and not be attached any longer. So you need to make sure that the stairs are definitely stable as you go into them. As you go into the basement, you also have to be concerned about the health hazards because a lot of times sewage backup can occur in the basement. So not only is there flood water, which will carry contaminants, but the sewer system may have backed up into the basement as well, causing additional problems as far as health hazards go. One of the important things to look at in this house is that uh, the mold, the amount of mold that's grown in here, with this house that we're in right now, they weren't able to get into it right away and open it up. It's very important to get in it as fast as you can and get these windows opened up to get this moisture, the humidity level inside of these houses to drop. Because you can even see the ceiling fan behind us. It was so moist in here, so humid in here that that ceiling fan dropped. That was actually not inside the flood water. And the ceiling, the water level didn't reach the ceiling level, but all this mold has grown after the fact because the high humidity inside this closed up house. So it's important to get in it as fast as you can and open it up and let that air out. If the plan is to rebuild and recover a house, the idea is to get in and dry it out as fast as possible. And in order to do that, you want to make sure to get anything that's going to be holding water out of that building. Like here we can see the insulation is falling down from the ceiling and it's still moist. You can hear it holding water. So you're going to have to clean that out. Same thing with the carpeting. This floor is soaked up with water, so we're gonna have to peel up that carpeting, cut it into strips, haul it out, put it out on the curb for recovery. Any furniture that could potentially hold water that's gonna increase the humidity levels in this house and add to this problem of mold growth. The question of what can we be recovered as you go through the house and what's gonna to have to be uh, removed and replaced is, is gonna be the question you're gonna continuously ask. The, uh, the general rule of thumb is when in doubt to throw it out, which is unfortunate, but that's just the way it's going to be because you don't want to be, create an unsafe situation. But in the case of non-porous materials like this dishware here, we can take this and as long as we meticulously clean it, disinfect it, and then sanitize any solid surface, then it can be reused again. If it's a porous material, like say for example clothing, uh, soft children's toys, furniture, 
those materials are going to have to be discarded and replaced. The temptation might be to try to use these, put these in a dishwasher to clean them. Well, in this house, it won't be a case because the flood level was well above where the dishwasher is. So the dishwasher was flooded. In order to use the dishwasher, we need to have that professionally reconditioned because it's got electronics in it and a motor in it as well. As far as the electronic appliances go, we can look in this kitchen here and see the, the refrigerator has floated and fallen over. There's an electric coffee pot over there. It looks like a toaster oven over there. Deciding whether those can be recovered or not, that's going to be up to a, a qualified electrician or a professional to recover those because all those electric switches, all the relays inside of each one of these things, electric motors are all going to need to be professionally refurbished. Again, it might be easier to, uh, to potentially just replace those electronic appliances, anything that's electrical. The temptation is going to be when you, uh, when you look to recovering and cleaning out these flood-covered homes is to try to do as little damage as possible, but we've even talked to some people that didn't want to open up walls. They were afraid they, they, would, they thought they would be able to, uh, to dry out inside, but we've looked in this small wall cavity here, and you can see this insulation is still completely moist. We can practically wring the water out of it. The idea is we have to at least open up the wall cavity on one side so it can at least dry to the inside or dry to the outside. There's no way that this wall is going to dry closed up like that. Just for comparison's sake, what we're going to do is we've, we've gone inside of this one house here, unfortunately, because of various reasons, they couldn't come in and clean it up right away. And then we're going to go into this house here and show the difference if you can get in right away and if you can clean up the house and open up the windows and air these buildings out as fast as you possibly can. And, and as we come into this house, you can see the difference between one house to the next. If you have a chance to get the windows opened up, get those wall cavities out, and get anything that's going to hold moisture out of there. Get that furniture out of there, get the carpets, pull up the carpet so the floorboards can dry. And then if we come in to check moisture levels, we can see that this house is actually already starting to dry out to pretty good levels. Here's 12% in this wood, so they're well on their way to recovery.